Hello and welcome back to Seven Days to Die. Today, we're going to be repairing my house. We're going to be building up this farm into something a little bit nicer to look at. I've got my crafting stations up here, or at least some of them, and I've got my storage and I've set this up and I've put a bunch of hay bales in here because I thought it looked cool. Just, I thought I'd add that. I know I took a bunch of hay bales out, but then I added a bunch more in. It's just how it is, okay? And I've repaired the windows in here. Uh, let me put this workbench here because I want to. Right, so what I want to do... Also, I put some hay bales in this field because I don't have enough crops to actually fill this field. And I didn't want to do trees because it was causing a lot of lag. So just hay bales implying that things are grown here was fine by me. Now, the nice thing about this... POI as a base is that it's not going to require much modeling. I don't have to move many blocks around. This looks fine. I just need to paint it to look a little bit better and I've got a bunch of paint crafting as we speak. It's mostly going to be a case of interior decoration. Hey, I missed the window. There we go. Which has just reminded me I do have my basement here, which has mushrooms in it, which I was supposed to be growing. Let's collect these. Got clay on me? Yeah, I do. Cool. Turn them all into seeds. I don't really want mushrooms, I just like the idea of growing them. You can have 49 growing in here. I'll come back in a minute once I've got more spores. I want to make the fence around this taller as well. And one thing I would kind of like to get done is set up machine guns to defend the place. But I don't know if it's going to look any good. And I don't know if I have enough machine guns or power to power all of those guns to defend the place. Or the ammo to fill them. But it's something I'm going to consider. Let me see what blocks I have in that regard, actually. So I've got six SMG auto turrets, which is what I would want to use. And I have a bunch of switches, a bunch of relays. Do I have a generator, though? That's kind of weird if I don't. Let's see, generator. Yeah. What level of electronics do I have? 43. That means there's a lot of things I can't make. But I shouldn't really need many of these. That's fine. And then traps I have maxed out, so I'm good in that regard. I would like a generator bank. Let's see if I can make one of those. Yes, I can. I'll probably need to use the workbench to craft that, I think. Right after you. Then I'm going to need a shitload of engines. Let's see how many I actually have already. I have four. That's not bad, actually. We can get two more quite easily. Fill out a full generator bank. The one downside of using generator banks here, though, is this is a snow world, and obviously gas is just something I can only really buy from the trader. But I can comfortably say I would always have enough gas. The traders are always going to have enough gas to do that. I did want to be self-sufficient, but solar panels just aren't very effective at powering a lot of things. So if I'm going to do power, I will use a generator bank and just buy loads of gas from traders. This is my pet rabbit, by the way. It seems to respawn here every so often and then disappear. So I just I just think it's my pet now. I assume it's part of the POI, like it's a, a, a sleeper rabbit. Let me get a bunch of nails. I'll need those later. Oh, do I have a wiring tool? That would be important to check. Yes. Here we go. I think just here would make the most sense for a generator, right? Or would you need a generator outside to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning? I know in Project Zomboid you do need to have one outside or you'll have issues like that. Maybe we put it next to this gas tank? Look, there it is, it respawns. Um, we build like a little area for it, I guess. Uh, let's see, if we want to have it here. Uh, in fact, I don't want to disrupt the bunny's spawn position, so let's do it over here. Uh, we'll want to take out this. I don't have a shovel on me, this'll do. And then if I do like a double door, do an iron double door. Uh, but let's do wood. There's a wandering horde coming in, hang on. Okay, there we go. I think this is the shape that I like for the generator bank. And you have your double door. I'll put a switch there. That worked quite well, I think. So one of the big things I'm going to have to do is just make my fence twice as tall. Just so zombies can't climb over it. I'm just going to rely on a lot of doing this. So I'm going to put a big fence around this whole area. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> All right, so it's the next day. Let's go over some of the things I got done yesterday because I just had to spend so much time placing blocks and reinforcing them. It was easier to just get it over with. So first of all, you'll notice that I have the two tall fence all the way around now with little posts for the machine gun turrets that I want to put up here. I've got positions for six of them right now because I actually have 
six turrets, so that makes sense. You'll notice my fence goes al along the inside as well. Doesn't look as nice, but it does work more effectively this way. Uh, there's two extra posts right here at the front that I also want to put machine guns on if I can, and one at the back as well. Now oh, the farm's done, nice. Forgot to do this, one second, there we go. I've also repaired all the windows on the house, as well as any other damaged blocks. And I built a little watchtower onto my, there's my rabbit, onto the silo there. Because I just felt like it made sense, it just looked like something that was cool, I wanted a watchtower. There was a tall building already here, so there we go. Got my mailbox as well, which I forgot I had. <laughs> so what I need to do next mainly is paint, and a lot of it. First, let me go get a bone knife and harvest the crops, and see where we are with that. See what seeds I have in here as well. Alright, so let's see what we can end up with from the farm here. I'm still trying to get basically 20 of everything I want to grow here, but things like coffee and aloe are being just massive bitches and not giving me enough seeds to really grow those parts of it but let's see where we are with it if nothing else i have a great amount of corn and potatoes which are like the important ones but still all right so we're getting there on things like hops and aloe still not quite 20 but coffee is still just absolutely terrible and so is my yucca just like two of each of those one day one day this farm will produce enough to actually grow <laughs> oh wandering horde hello Right, back to planting my crops. There we go. Right, so let's get to painting. First things first, this barn looks burned and it's kind of ugly, so what do I want it to look like instead? Logically, I would assume something red, right? Like, what, what is the barn that is red actually coloured as? Probably some kind of wood, right? Doesn't seem to be marked as red, though. Wood. Yeah, red wood. Okay. I painted this whole surface red. I mean, that looks cleaner, that's for sure. Let's do that. And then, I believe with these kind of things, you usually want to go for, like, a white. Don't know what I would make it out of. Metal white? Let me see what else we got. Wood? No, there's no white wood. Let me scroll through it and see. Yeah, I guess we'll go for metal white. So, paint all sides. Do, like, that. Window frames. Here we go. I put some white on this. Now then, for the barn door. Probably want to stick with some kind of metal or wood. The western wood, how does that look? Uh, could work. I'm looking at pictures of barns and they usually just have the exact same wood on the doors. Like that, but that's weird. Let's go for something metal then, yeah. yeah let's maybe go corrugated. Oh, that paints the whole thing. One second. Oh, I'm out of paint. <laughs> this is what I get. Because I painted on both sides, didn't it? Yeah, oh, that wasted so much paint. It's fine, it's fine. There's more. Here we go. Let's turn off, paint all sides. Then try that again. Right. You want just like a paint roller and corrugated metal. I guess that'll do. Okay, let's take that white metal paint again, take paint surface and paint all sides, do sort of a this kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want to frame it with white, but I don't want the entire roof to be white. I'll have to use some temporary frames to get high enough up to actually do this in some places. There we go. I'm going to need to get onto the roof anyway to paint it, so let's just get up there. Right, so I've framed off the roof, now we just need to find the right material. When in doubt, shingles always look kind of good, so let's try that. There we go. Uh, try and fill that one gap in. There we go. As much sense as that doesn't really make, let's just ignore it. <laughs> Same thing happened over here. Do that. Cool. I'm also going to take the texture from the floor in here and apply that to this. It makes a bit more sense. And then get some more weathered wood. Maybe, oh, maybe something like that. Mm, nah. Wood fence? Eh, that looks a little bit better, but maybe, yeah, that. For the top, shingles wood. Go. Oh, I just accidentally painted the whole fucking roof again. Uh, not the roof, sorry, the whole wall. Stop that. Copy that. Make sure we just have paintbrush. There we go. Make this the same color on the inside. Like, it's a big cabinet. It kind of is. Here we go. Yeah, I kind of like that little shed thing there. Uh, it's hard to see because it's snowing, but let me go up to the watchtower and see how the roof looks. I see a couple of flaws there. There's a white part missing there. But yeah, overall, I think that looks fine. 
very, very clean, but I like very, very clean, so that's fine by me. If I wanted things to look post-apocalyptic, I would just leave them as they are. Let's jump up here real quick and paint this one fucking annoying piece here. Yeah. Is it like that on all of the sides? No. Okay, let's come down from here then. Right, so I like the outside of the barn. Simple design, clean, works for me. Let's have a look on the inside now. It's all still burned wood. Let's see. Does red wood work on the inside? No, I did a paint all sides. Is that wrong one? Gimme. I need to do it here as well. Grab the red, put it on paint surface, and see how that looks. Actually, that's the wrong one to do that to. <laughs> Does it look better as red on the inside? I mean, I do like red, so I'm not going to complain too much, but does it make sense? Because this is the same paint that was on the outside, I'm pretty sure. That's weird. Didn't mean to do that. Paint that. You know, I kind of like the red. I need better lighting in here, though. Oh, that's a problem for later when I've got a bit more stuff to work with. Uh, Where's that white stuff? The white metal. That could be good for these struts. Even though it doesn't make sense because it's meant to be wood. It could be like painted wood. There isn't really a white painted wood. There is, but it's not as clean as this. Also, let me do that and just... <laughs> Oh, I painted the whole floor. That's annoying. <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. There we go. I wonder, does the railing work? In... Oh, that's went very weird. Uh, I think it does, though. I'll just have to take very great care in actually painting this horrible, horrible system. There we go. I like the whiteness. It's a very good accent to the interior here. Maybe apply it in a few other places here as well. Red and white just works quite well together. But the fog in here is really annoying me. Yep, if it wasn't for all the bloody fog in this room, I'd quite like how it looks. Head up here, bring some more of that red, and bring some more of the white, actually. Looks like we need to replace this window up here. Do that. Oh, this one's actually still there, but I'll just take it out because I don't have metal on me. Replace it with a wooden one. There we go. Paint it white. There. So I'm going to take out this ceiling thing. This is mostly just completely broken blocks as it is. I just realized I don't really need to break it with my axe. I just need to stand on the ones that are like broken. Which I think I got all of them now, so let's actually break these with the axe. There we go. And what remains is to fill in any gaps like this that I've obviously broken at some point. There we go. There, I think I'm happy with the paint in here at least. Oh wait, 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 wait. Missed this window. There. And the paint in here is also fine, so what would remain is painting potentially the outside fence if I want to, which I think would just be a massive waste of paint if I did that. Uh, but another thing would definitely be painting the house and its interior as well. It's going to require more paint, so let's go see how much water I have. I've certainly got some, and I've got plenty of chrysanthemum as well, don't worry about that. So... Let me burn. Oh, you can't burn a door. That's boring. I had a spare door. I went to burn it. Um, put 10 minutes of fuel in there. So we got a little bit of extra paint there. Is there any more water around though? No. Okay. Let's just queue up an extra 22 thingies of paint there, which is another 11,000. That'll certainly help, but we'll need to wait for that to be done first. So we actually, where are my SMG turrets and all that kind of thing? I bet I put them in the dump chest down here. Yes. I've got more water, actually. Let's queue that up as well, then. There's another 7,000. But yeah, so SMG turret, wiring tool, relays. Those are the main things. Let's set these up. I don't have all the power for them yet, but I can put them in place. Certainly don't have enough ammo for them either, but I'll deal with that later. Have them diagonally facing out like that. Except for this one can just go straight like that. And once these are all wired up, they should deal with any wandering zombies, but more importantly, they should deal with screamers that might come in when I'm using my forges and stuff. But there haven't been many screamers anyway, so not too worried about that. I just like having them. One here, and the last one. So now we just need to put a bunch of wire relays in places that don't look too bad, which I think mostly on the sides of buildings should cover everything we need to do. There we go. So there's relays pretty much everywhere. Which I'll just be able to use to get power to anywhere I need it to be in the base. So let me wire all this up. That is going to take a while. I won't make you sit through all of that. 
There we go. The base is now fully wired up. The wire relays are ugly, but hey, what are you going to do? They're just how they have to be without me making like an underground power grid system, which I'm just not going to do. It takes about 119 watts of power right now. After I put in a couple more turrets and lights, that'll probably go up a little bit more and we'll have to put some more engines in, but that's fine. Now we have to paint the watchtower and the silo and my house and the water purifier area. So let's go see how the paint's doing. Here's a bunch of paint. Let's need more fuel. Give it another 10 minutes. Let's go see what I want to do to the house. First of all, and arguably most importantly, what colour do I want it to be? Um, let's see, I like the colour red, but red's already taken by the barn. Green would be a good colour to put next to the barn, because obviously green and red contrast with each other. What other colours would work? Blue, maybe? Let's have a look. Oh, ugh, that twisted my brain as it switched colours. Um, I don't dislike it. I feel like I'm being different for the sake of being different, though. Let's have a look. Maybe I need something that stands out a little bit more from the bloody background of this world, which is obviously a very bluish hue as it is. What about white siding? No, what are you fucking thinking? You just said it's too snowy, and now you're like, but what if I made it white? Thought I'm fucking stupid. Um, orange? No, I don't like that. hate the colour orange, but it might work quite well. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, that does stand out quite well. It's it's visibly distinct from the barn, and it stands out from the horrible, horrible white background we have going on. So I guess we'll have an orange house, even though I hate the colour orange. But hey, it's always good to step outside your comfort zone. It's not going to make me like orange, though. <laughs> right, I want something a little bit nicer down the bottom here. I want, like, bricks. That's a bit weird. Now, these work. Hmm, what about... Oh, Adobe Trim White? That kind of works. Goes well with the orange. Oh, what the fuck? And we'll fix that with individual blocks in a bit. Hey, piss off. Yeah, okay, aside from the fact that he keeps adding it to the railings, this does look quite nice. I will fix the railings manually. Yeah, right, that works. Let's find a wood colour that I like to go with this. <laughs> Yellow, does that look good? No. No, it does not. It should. I mean, yellow works with orange. The warm colours definitely help with the whole this thing, you know? But it does look a bit um, like some kind of fast food franchise. So, not that. Uh, concrete mustard? Uh, no, that doesn't help much more. Ink? No, that does not work with orange, but orange doesn't go with anything, so what do you know? Purple? Obviously not. I don't even know why I thought about that. Just white? Mm, could be worse. Maybe I need something metal. Ah, I blinded myself. Try that again on the correct block this time. No, this just makes everything chrome. Maybe I just need to use the same colour I used on the barn. This works. Metal white. Oh, this is the colour I used on the barn, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let me paint the railing and then I'll go back through and fix the trim on the ground because that seems to be easier. The railing is very pissy. Right, so I'm going to paint this house throughout the night and in the morning we'll see what I've done to it. Alright, so next day, house is slightly fucked up because I was painting it from the inside and some of these exterior areas look a bit weird. But uh, the idea here is still right. I'm going for the white accent because it just works quite well. I still can't figure out a way to paint these, so we're just all going to have to ignore the weird corners. And um, if you would like to mention how it annoys your OCD, I would like you to Google what OCD actually is and shut the fuck up. Thank you. Um... These window frames are the bane of my existence, because they're such a pain in the ass to paint. But yeah, so anyway, even though I don't like the colour orange, it does stand out quite well against the very white backgrounds. Oh, I missed another bloody window. I think the orange goes quite well with the red of the barn, though, and the white works quite well with both of them. And, of course, there's the idea that this is all... Oh, I just did something very weird to the inside of the building, I think. As I was saying... There's the idea that this is supposed to look warm in contrast to the cold. Which, if you lived in a frozen wasteland, you'd want your house to be as warm looking as possible to help trick you into not being cold. Right, so I think that's all the windows. Let's head inside really quick. Oh, this weird area didn't get painted. Anyway. Inside, I've gone for a similarly orangey-red colour scheme. Just 
using the same red from the barn because there really isn't that many colors as it is. I went for a camouflage floor in here because I thought it looked cool. Kind of weird though, to be honest. <laughs> Up here we'll get more red and orangey brown. The rooms, I just went with whatever because who really cares about the secondary bedrooms, right? And then the attic is just wood. Yeah, I, I didn't do much in here. I don't care. <laughs> it's just an attic. It's not going to look very nice. Okay. So, hello. Anyway. Painting is mostly done. There are a few areas I still need to paint. I'll deal with them later. Now I need, like, actual decorative items. So let me go inside and see what I have here. So I've got appliances, filing cabinet, cooler, pipes, blinds, paintings, blocks. And I have some nails crafted here, which should allow me to make furniture blocks of various kinds. So let's make like 10 wooden furnitures, 10 cabinets and cupboards, and go from there. So, paintings, first of all. Let's head inside the house, because I'm not going to put paintings in a barn, that's just weird. Uh, oh, we've already got paintings in here. Let's place this there. Just notice that has not painted behind the cat. There we go. I'm just going to place a bunch of paintings throughout this house because paintings look good and there isn't that much to decorate with as it is. Okay, paintings used. They are everywhere at this point. Let's see what we can do with this wooden furniture. Oh, barrels, yes. And produce baskets. Those are probably best used outside. Uh, let's make sure everybody has a nightstand. Yep, that's got one. Yep, I think they all have them, but just be yeah, extra sure. Yeah, don't need any nightstands. Uh, let's get some barrels put somewhere, first of all, there, because I want them in here, place some of those like that, and let's not forget the basement, prime barrel territory, let's also get a dog kennel, is it like there, big wheel, why not, and of course pallets, you can never go wrong with pallets, then we got these, let's head over to the kitchen area, get that, go, appliances, you probably need a clock somewhere, Get stove, refrigerator, coffee thingy, toaster, more clocks. There, I'm out of appliances now, I think. Here we go. I've also installed a bunch of blinds now as well. You can still see outside, but it'd be much harder to see inside. This is still a post-apocalyptic home, of course. That honestly might be all the house needs. Like, it's got seats, got furniture in the kitchen. I just need some lights. What do you need to make lanterns? Because they're the best light source. Oh, that's a lot of forged iron and duct tape. Hmm. What about just... Ah, you know what? I'll just make these. It's fine. Oh, in fact, I'll have to wait until I've got more water to make the glue to make the duct tape to make the lanterns. Yeah. Right, I've got a little bit of extra glue there. Plus the glue I had in one of these. Let's turn that into duct tape and use it for my lanterns. I need more cloth. That's all the duct tape I'll be able to make, I guess. Yeah, I'm out of electrical parts anyway. That's fine. I'll gather up some more of those in the next few days. Wait, let me load up my SMG turrets now. There we go. Now all my turrets are active, so they should pick off zombies as they come past. Let me put the extra ammo away. Okay, well, we definitely need more lanterns, but it's working quite well. Let me go get my paintbrush and some more paint. So we need to paint my watch tower here, and I want something like logs. There we go, that looks perfectly fine to me. Just gives it a bit more texture than the flat one. Okay, so I've painted the water thingy here with some apparently lacking paint in a few positions but with some reinforced wood paint texture just to give it a bit of a better look than the flat default wood well the weather is actually clear here you can see we've done a massive transformation for how this looks there's still a few things that need to be done like oh my god more white windows over here oh okay let me do that now but yeah you can see we're, it's, it's coming along most of the internal decoration is done as well it's just need to do the paint there we go. So yeah, I'd say this place is like 90% done. We'll finish this off in another episode. In the next episode, which will be the final episode, we'll finish this off. We'll do some tier 6 infestations. We'll do the day 42 horde and then we'll end the series. Let me know if you're still enjoying the series. If you need a 7 days to die server, you can get one for 10% off on the link in the description. I earn a commission if you use that link, just so you know. Anyway, in the meantime, special thank you to my members and patrons. If you want to become one of those, there are links in the description to do so. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out another one? I would recommend the one on the top right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.